the employment of manual scavengers and construction of dry electric <coughs> coordination act of 1993, so that the state government is going to take action for the adoption of the new act. That is the prohibition of employment as manual scavengers in the Rehabilitation Act of 2013 be adopted. Those who are in favor of the motion may say aye. aye. Those against may say no. The ayes have it, the ayes have it. The resolution as moved is adopted unanimously. Speaker, sir. I raise to make arbitrary defense on the demise of the of the one now a sitting MLA and advisor who passed away recently due to a heart attack in the early hours of the 28th of August 2013 and 2023 at the CIH SR in Sri Lokini was a veteran politician, a strong regionalist, the oldest and cinemas members of the present times. He was a strong supporter of the regional party and sacrificed and stood firm for his principles and ideologies upholding the great Naga identity. He was a man who commanded huge respect and always had a balanced view on all matters. A great loss not only for the Konyak or the EFPO, but for the Nagas as a whole. And my party and immigrants are everywhere and these illegal immigrants mentioning illegal Bangladeshi immigrants I think we may avoid that Bangladeshi because it is very sensitive to pinpoint one person or one community so in general, we can ask, we have a problem of Bangladeshi, but that can be dealt with. But we should not point out a community or a people. Mr. Speaker, sir, Article 371A is like one of the best weapons under the Constitution, which guarantees to safeguard our rights, our heritage, our laws, our practices. But for me, this Article 71A has been in cold storage for too long. We have never made use of it. It's like an old rusted gun. Once we tried, we tried to polish it, we tried to make use of it, but it misfired. For example, <coughs> in 2010, under our same leader, he was the chief minister, I was also the uh, minister then, we adopted a resolution on petroleum and natural gas. And that resolution empowers us. We said that we are empowered under Article 371A. So we will pass our own resolution as far as exploration of oil and natural gas is concerned. And as soon as we pass that resolution, an uh, unstart question in the Lok uh, Raja Sabha was put by our late former MP CM Chang. And the answer came as a surprise shock to the entire Nagas. So I'll read a small para here. As soon as the matter came up to the notice of Ministry of Petroleum and Natural Gas, it was taken up with the Ministry of Home Affairs. The Ministry of Home Affairs has advised that Article 371A does not confer legislative powers to the Legislative Assembly of Nagaland for regulation and development of mineral oil. It's stated very clearly. 
the power to make laws in respect of subject covered under his one rests with the parliament. They say that all this rests with the parliament. And so they have given us this gun, but it is when we try to make use of it, it misfired. Then an order came from the Home Ministry asking the matter has accordingly been taken up with the Chief Minister Naganet, requesting him to withdraw the notification and resell the Nagaland Petroleum and Natural Gas Resolution 2012, as well as related resolutions. Therefore here, why I am cautioning this House is, we should be very careful in our thoughts and our dealings. We should not always think that Article 71A A is there to protect us. It will protect us if only we make use of it and we pass resolutions in the House, in the Assembly. Coming to UCC, human memory is very short, Mr. Speaker said. I want, you, I want to take you back in 2019, Lok Sabha elections, where the NDA government, including the BJP RSS, with commitment, they had gone to the elections, with some few promises, and they call that mega promises. Their mega promise one is the Ram Temple, in Ayodhya. Our Hindu brothers, they believe that their god Ram was built, uh, was born in Ayodhya. And so they had to build a temple. So their mega promise one is to build a Ram temple in Ayodhya. And today it's on the verge of completion. And in January, I'm very sure they're going to inaugurate this, which will become a booster for the party's election campaign. Mr. Speaker said, they made up promise too. Let us recall Jammu and Kashmir. <coughs> their mega promise too is the abrogation of Article 370. Article 370 in Jammu and Kashmir was also done away with. The two mega promises, one, two, <coughs> is fulfilled. <coughs> now today, what state is Jammu and Kashmir in? Jammu and Kashmir state was divided into two Union territories. One is Ladakh, one is JNK. And since 19, 2019, in JNK there has been presidential rule. And till now, it is continued against the wishes of the people. They are asking, seeking for elections pleading for elections, but the center is given a blind ear and they are not listening to them. Moreover, all the rules and regulations is going against them, especially the Ladakh road. There is no road. The road is in such a horrible condition. It's, the road is like rivers, but they levy heavy tax on the people. Network, so on and so forth, is limited to few areas and places only. They have even brought up, they have even brought up prepaid smart electric meters. Where even though you have not used the electricity, you have to advance pay the government. Then property tax on every household owners is levied very highly. These are the conditions that is happening. I have the papers with me. I'll be supplying it to the Chief Minister and your good office. Their mega promise three is UCC. Uniform Civil Code, Hindu Taft based nationalistic policies, politics of Jan Shan, which is under process. Mr. Speaker, sir, if I am to state UCC in my own words, very simply, not trying to target any party or individual, let me define it this way. Uniform Civil Code is a subject matter propounded by BJP RS, which is deeply rooted in Hindu Taft. It is the foundation of totalitarian rule of a dictator. 
We must remember uniform law and dictatorship are two sides of the coin. We have seen it in the past that only dictators have enforced uniform law successfully. UCC will remove pluralism and diversity and thereby fulfill <coughs> the dream of one nation, one religion, one culture. That means the country is heading for a dictatorship rule if UCC is enforced in the entire country. Either that will be the end of minorities or this integration of India, where our rights and equalities will be forgotten. At the ongoing ceasefire of government of India and Nagaland, with all the factions for many years, we have been regularly recommending the government of India for <clears throat> declaring any area of the state as this third area and keeping Nagaland outside the purview of Habsburg. The government of India, however, till now has taken the area of 18 police stations of the state outside the purview of Absa out of 75 uh, police stations. Speaker, sir, in this regard, the honorable member wants assurance from <coughs> Minister in charge of home, but this is the decision is up to the government of India, so I cannot give a showing in this house. The second one about this uh, Etang uh, police button post. Yes, the conclusion time has been given for 2024 March, but I assure the honorable member that before Christmas, I will thank you for inauguration of the government. <laughs> <laughs> With the uh, submitting to the honorable member, it's a champion of people, or uh, we try to submitting towards that. I will do the two ministers for in charge of four in his reply. Mm -hmm. I wanted to keep my submission in this way, in the form of supplementary, in regard to this uh, our first special power act. <coughs> I know for certainty that uh, all the 60 of us sitting here, there is no opposition that this as far should be lifted from Nagaland. I was looking up the development of home assigned by the then Chief Minister and the present Chief Minister Sri Nikuliu for 2008 to 38. During that time also, this question and answers were done. As a Home Minister of the State, I also thought that it should be lifted. But at the same time, I was thinking it should not be lifted. I do not know which way I was thinking. From the the point of view, if we ask the Nagaland State Police to act as per the law stoppage, as per your assigned duty, and who as per the police, <coughs> Our own state police will be harassing our own people. <coughs> Resulting into killings also. And whereas in other side of the world, 
I was also one who was very vocal. Maybe even now, so. Naga political settlement. Naga political issue settlement should be brought about at the areas. And what people form it may be, it has to be settled once more. So that people may have been comfortable sleep and comfortable mind <coughs> without making any item or evil design because idle mind generate evil design. <coughs> Therefore, as a minister in charge of Paul by Uj, I was under obligation that I had to defend and protect the Constitution of India in its integrity. <coughs> While giving our moral support to the political the expression of the lovers as a parliament minister I cannot be a plaything just like that. Today I am a mere Emily sitting here in this office house listening to the lifting and then the continuation of the very act of our process, special power act. We are all master of this uh, particular act, political, legal history, and legal implications of the our process, special power act. Uh, it is slightly for these origin questions, but it is all right. I will just do a little light on the background of this area, the transmission lines, where the casualties of the intertribal tension which erupted in the late 90s. Ever since then, the power department has initiated on five occasions to restore the transmission lines and the standing poles, but due to fund shortage, financial crunch, we were not able to restore it quickly. The civil societies have been very cooperative, and we face no difficulty from their side. The administration too has been very cooperative, and we have received all the necessary analysis. And uh, we have taken up this under the additional budgetary provision in 2021-22. We have also proposed it in the second central plan location of 2023, and also with the additional fund requirement for state resources in 2023 again also in the special assistance to state for capital investment in 22-23 and the last time was the propose was the proposal was submitted for inclusion in the sectoral outlay for departmental activities this year unfortunately we have not been able to address this area but uh, nevertheless, the department has again proposed to be included in the SOA state plan. Whatever it is, we shall do our best. We are aware that the transmission line has taken a very long route, but the shortest route from San Samuel to Mo to Mu was not very really strong. So this time we have an alternative which is a 137 kV line from Longland to Mo, which will go through a boy, Mobu and Tobu. This, is, uh, this has been initiated under Nava State Plan. We will address it in any case. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much.
was it in secret? <coughs> If there's any shortcomings, I can discuss with the department. However, we have issued a single work order to the uh, village communities as per the guidelines of the ministry. And therefore, it was required that the community participation was essential in the implementation of this program. However, this is a collective responsibility because uh, this is a central government project announced by Prime Minister Modi in the year 2019 by the states who have more water supply connectivity by 2020. <coughs> so, uh, as, a, as a elected member of that constituency, we can also write the, uh, his electorates, the village council, if proper implementation of the work is not done, I'm sure those are his uh, supporters, so correct advice can be given to them because this will be monitored. There is third party interference here in the submission report to the uh, government of India. So there cannot be any uh, short, shortcut implications as far as the, uh, our department is concerned. So uh, if there is anything possible for the department uh, to interfere, I will ensure that uh, justice is done in the prestigious program of the Honorable Prime Minister. Uh, regarding other explanations that he has given, uh, I'm not a party to it, but uh, we will see to it that uh, if anything uh, related to water is concerned, uh, this has to be a joint effort and discussion has to take place. <laughs> so, uh, this is what I do. Humbly submit one thing I want to share with all the honorable members is that I have received a lot of uh, uh, recommendation uh, letters to have water supply connectivity in the urban and municipal locations. Mm -hmm. However, I want to say on the floor of this house that JJM does not cover the rural, uh, I mean urban habitations. As for the rules of executive business from the Ministry of Dasharati, we are not supposed to urban areas and municipal locations. So this is one clarification. Though a lot of uh, letter has been sent to me uh, to take up in their respective districts where they represent the town areas. So uh, this is the uh, my mind which I want to share. So uh, as mentioned, if there is any requirement, any shortcomings, I discuss with the department and we see that justice is done. The question that was asked is right. Understandable. We have uh, SIM coordinators in all the districts, and they are the ones who coordinate with the various schools in their respective districts for the school plan. Here, I would like to, from all honorable members, selection of the SIM coordinators is very important. And my own experiences tell me that sometimes our members. One, and a teacher who would be the coordinator who does not stay in station or who is not so responsible and his team are not very responsible. And this also could be one of the reasons why, you know, the allocations of uh, funds to the various schools is affected. So it is uh, like mentioned by the Honorable Minister, District-wise allocation is not made, but it is as per the school plan submitted to the assistant coordinators, subject to the verification of the assistant coordinators that funds are allocated, allocated by the ministry. Uh, the PAB approval is there. It, it goes to Delhi. The team goes up to Delhi and have a meeting with the government of India. And the students' enrollment, uh, the teachers, uh, uh, the number of teachers, the condition of the schools, all these aspects are verified by the ministry. Just because we send a proposal, they will not just blindly allocate the fund. So these are the criteria. So I request all the members, uh, when you select, or rather when you recommend for an uh, area coordinator, please ensure that a responsible teacher is recommended so that 
he or she will be able to do justice to the uh, respective district or the schools. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. 